started quickly last night. The Nets had four in the first and three in the third, cruising to a series opening win against Minnesota. Today they look to Tanner Roark to lead another twin killing and make it seven in a row at home. Welcome to the ballpark. The rain has stopped. Cloudy, cool, supposed to be a nice afternoon. We've got kids and pups in the park and the fans gathering for another home game. They're looking for the Nats to win seven straight here. Doing the job. Six and three on the road, six and one at home. That's the way you want your record to look like. And that, that old guy in left field, he's got a lot of baseball left in him. We've seen that this week. Yeah, careful. If, call, <laughs> if you're calling him old, he doesn't like that right now. But we like the way that Jason Worth has been playing. Off to the slow start that all of a sudden kind of turned the corner Tuesday with his 200th career home run. We ended up finding it in the yard out there, We're, rolled around. He's got the baseball. But when you talk about what he's done his last eight games, seven hits in his last eight games. So he's not only getting hits he's taking away hits he's taking away taters so playing like a 26 year old Jason Worth doing it all with the home run last night six of his last seven hits for extra bases three doubles three home runs and maybe we start calling him J double instead of J dub because yeah. he's absolutely locked in yeah so that guy who's been around for a while how about that that's better with Espinosa and Lobatone six seven and eight last night they were fantastic five hits they drove in six runs three bagger by Lobatone only his third career and then worth, of course, the power. Now back to Tanner Roark on the rotation today. He's been a little inconsistent lately. A rough start, a good one, then another rough one. Bounce back today, hopefully. So he's due for a good one, right? Yeah. And we'll keep an eye on that front hip sinker to lefties. I'm telling you, that's the pitch. When he has that going, everything else works off that. Tanner Roark facing the Twins for the first time, but at Nationals Park, he likes it here. 13 and 8, 281 career ERA. Hey, the Nats can win another series today. Nesson brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you by Eastern Lexus. Some things are simply impossible to ignore. The strikingly designed Lexus NX Turbo and Hybrid and by Ocean City, Maryland. Let us show you a good time in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. And a salute. To his guys out in right field, Bryce Harper in the lineup again today. 
Yeah, having a good time with the bullpen guys. Hopefully another win here at home. So it's a little cool after the rain cleared out of here. Muggy, 62 at game time. The Twins, six in the American League in hitting, but 11th in runs. Miguel Sano, six game hitting streak. He's now 10 for 22. Sano had a single in the sixth, the home run in the eighth, to give Minnesota a little late offense here last night. Tanner Roark, first time against the Twins. Brian Dozier, the leadoff man. Uncharacteristically slow start for him at 188. Right on time at 105, and the pop up to Danny Espinosa. Yeah, last start on the 18th for Tanner against the Marlins. Five runs on seven hits over six innings of work, two strikeout, two walk. The Arsenal last start, he threw the fastball 64% of the time, the slider 27, the curveball only 2%. And the change up seven, the fastball average in 91 miles an hour. The clean shave in Tanner Roark. Eddie Rosario next, the left fielder hitting 245. 27 year veteran, the crew chief Jim Joyce has the plate. Toby Basner, James Hoy, Chad Fairchild are on the bases. So important today for Tanner to get off to a good start. And a lot of his problems have become early in ball games, both against that Miami ball club. And I think he gave up three in the first his last start. Right in there. Yeah, Tanner gave up three at Philadelphia on three hits. Pardon me, that was at Miami Monday. Marcelo Zuna got that big two-run single in the first inning. And it's a full count at three and two. Rosario with a five-game hitting streak. Eight hits over that time. Everything in the National League is tonight. Three two with one out. Got him. Ninety three away. Rosario unable to reach it. Two down. Let's have the defense for the Nats behind Tanner Roark today. Worth Heisey Harper the outfield. Espinosa Rendon left side. Drew Zimmerman right side. And Wilson Ramos back behind the dish. The Nats last year at this time had allowed 24 unearned runs in the month of April. Unbelievable. This year, two. Wow. What a difference. Here's Joe Maurer. Off to a great start, 20 for 60. Still one of the best hitters in baseball on the road this year. Hitting 367 away from target field. And that's going to beat the shift. He might be digging for two. Worth gets to it with a bare hand. Gets it back in quickly, and Joe Maher will settle for a two out single. So now he's reached base all 18 games for the Twins. It's impressive. A little inside out piece right here. Tanner Roark going with the curveball, it looks like. Breaks down and in. He fights his hands inside the baseball. It might have a little pine tar on it, huh? The ball died a hero on that one because they had <laughs> to throw it out. There's Miguel Sano. We saw an example of his power here last night. When he hit one straight away center, way over the 402 mark, and it banged off the back wall. Right in front of the batter's eye near those air vents there. That little white mark below the left air vent, that's it. Yeah. It's big boy tater. So he's hit three on the air with six RBIs. Yeah. 
Just 22 years of age, as we mentioned last night. He'll have a birthday in a couple of weeks. Third in the American League Rookie of the Year voting last year. Roark behind, danger count. He was ripping, and he slams it off the net in front of the Twins' dugout. Did you see how big he was yet? Did I miss it? Well, we did a couple times last yeah, night, but, but he's like all 6'4", 262. 6'4", 262. Wow. And he almost took out his shortstop, Escobar, with that foul ball. By the way, before we go much farther, Twins have announced a scratch of Irvin Santana for tomorrow's game. And the Nats will face Tyler Duffy, who went 5-1 and one as a rookie last year. 3-1 with two outs. That happened about 40 minutes before game time. And now the count's full with two outs, and Maurer will be on the move. A pretty good run on the fastball so far from Tanner Roark. He's keeping it down for the most part. Struck him out with some curveballs last night. Let's see if they go off speed here in a 3-2 count. Runner on the move, and it's just low. But that's a good miss. Even though he walked him on a 3-2 pitch, when Tanner Roark's run into trouble in his two starts early, it's been on fastballs up. So he's been bottom of the zone so far, below the zone, and that's where he wants to be. First time in this series, we see Oswaldo Arcia, 23-year-old from Venezuela, who hit 276 for the Twins in 18 ball games last year. The distinctive strike call of Jim Joyce. Wide open stance, nearly facing the pitcher, Arcia, with everything. Modified shift on. Arcia has some big time pop, too. He had a 450 foot home run the other day, straight away center field. Yeah, two years ago for Minnesota, he hit 20 home runs in just 103 games. And he used to sponsor sideline reports. Really? Oh, that was Afsia. Yeah, oh. it's close. That changeup was up. Had enough dip at the end to get into the upper part of the strike zone 2-2. Garcia, 8 for 28 on the year. Swing and a miss on 93 upstairs. So Tanner Roar gets through that dreaded first inning. A good sign for him and for the Nats today.
the park at Nationals Park today. And I'd say they're in pain every time Jim Joyce calls a strike. That is a red bone coon hound and a soft coated Wheaton Terrier. We'll look forward to more of your accurate dog identifications throughout mm -hmm. the afternoon. Wilson Ramos. Well, the twins know a little bit about him. Started his professional career there. Eight for 27 in seven, ga seven games back in 2010. Wilson Ramos hitting 314 for the Nats. He's a Washington veteran now. Chris Isey in center for Taylor. Stephen Drew at second base for Murphy. And the Nats face Phil Hughes for the third time ever. Heisey greets him with a line drive foul that made a lot of noise. How about this guy's control, Phil Hughes? 16 walks all of last season. It's the fewest in all of baseball with a minimum of 150 innings. And it's the second season in a row he's walked less than 20 hitters. So you're going to see strikes. There's no reason to wait around if you're a Nats hitter on the fastball, cutter, curveball, changeup combination. 11.63 strikeouts to every walk by Hughes in 155 innings. Heisey looking to bunt. The ball checks up. And Hughes with it right in front of him, able to grab it and throw out Chris Heisey. Let's go inside the numbers. Now, the Nats pitchers have given up a few, but Washington in the first inning of all their games this year has scored more runs in that inning than any team in baseball has scored in any other inning. So they've been off to some great quick starts this year to help the pitchers. Interesting stat, all different innings accounted for there. Brought to you by Jeep. Anthony Rendon checked in with two hits and five trips last night. They came in the first two innings. Not many matchups to talk about today. Only Harper, Zimmerman, Drew, and Espinosa in the lineup have faced Phil Hughes and Stephen Drew the most with eight at bats. That's a greater <laughs> Swiss mountain dog. Like the helmet. Rendon, early ball game, another hit. So Anthony's starting to swing the ball better and using the ballpark with his line drives. And I think he's leading the league, and there goes the no-hitters already early in this season. Nothing to wait around for. Phil Hill, Hughes going to throw you a strike, and look at the sink on that ball. Down and in, Rendon fights to get his hands inside and drills it the other way. Classic inside-out swing from Anthony Rendon. Right back up the middle for the first hit of the day. There goes a no-hitter. Well, Bryce is under 300 for the first time this year. On base percentage, under 400 for the first time. He's been getting nasty pitched by everybody. A lot of off-speed stuff. He sees a 91 on the outside edge there, but he's been seeing a lot of change-ups, breaking balls, stuff in the dirt. One for three career against Hughes, who the Nats scored three runs against on four hits in the exhibition game here three weeks ago. Twins came in for a Friday-Saturday combo before they opened in Baltimore. The Nationals flew to Atlanta. Eight home runs, 22 RBIs. Our defense for the Twins today, Rosario Kepler Arcia, the outfield, Escobar Sano, left side, Dozier Mauer, right side, and Kurt Suzuki once again behind the plate. Yeah, Kurt swinging the bat well, too. A couple of hits here last night, five for his last 11. The Twins' middle infielders have six errors between them. Only Oakland has made more than Minnesota's 12. Price still has more walks than strikeouts, 10 over 8. Then he's been on base 15 of his last 16 games. That's into right field. 
Rendon easily over to third. We'll see what Bryce has in mind. He's going to challenge the arm of Arcia. Throw off line. Bryce Harper, another extra base hit. His 13th of the year on double number five. Check out the pitch sequence. Phil Hughes versus Bryce Harper. Two seam fastball on the corner for strike one. Then he goes to the other side of the plate for a ball. Another fastball elevated at 90. And then when they put down this curveball, I said if they throw this in the zone, it might be out of here. And just a little bit of late break down and in kept it in here. But Bryce Harper with the hustle double. That's in business once again in the first inning. Second, third one out. Nice swing, Bryce Harper. Yeah, they've been roaring out of the gate in a big spot early for Ryan Zimmerman, who's one for four career against Phil Hughes. I mean, Bryce just has been killing the off speed down the middle or down and in early in the season. And when you saw him put down two right there, you're thinking, okay, they're, they're going to bounce it. They have to bounce it. If they don't, they're in trouble, and they didn't. Well off the plate inside. That's a pretty lofty number as a team. 272 runners in scoring position. Ryan has 11 hits this year, a homer, four RBIs. See, that average can go down right here, and the Nats can still go up one to nothing. True. Meaning if he hits a ground ball to short, second. Still pick up an RBI. Two one. Zimmerman up the middle. That's through for a hit. Rendon is home. Here comes Harper. Kepler's throw cut off. Zimmerman caught between first and second. And the Nats lead by two. Ryan Zimmerman RBIs number five and six. Well, I just I mean broken record time but a but professional run driver in I mean the, the guy just knows what he wants to do in these situations. He's not afraid to hit with two strikes which I think is key for any guy that wants to drive in runs and he stays in the middle of the field for the most part just trying to hit a ground ball right there. He knew the infield was back. He wanted to go right here because he thought it was going to be a close play at the plate. He drew the throw so that Bryce Harper could score. And just like that, throw that stat up there again, the first inning. Two nothing Nats. What's that, 24 runs now in the first? That's impressive. Pitchers love it. 8-6-4 on the cutoff by the Twins, and then finishing with the Dozier tag. That's in there to Stephen Drew. Two for eight career against Phil Hughes with all his action recently over in the American League. Strikeout, inning over. But the Nats turn three hits into two runs. Zimmerman drives them in.
early 2-0 lead here at Nats Park. Jason Wirth has made a few impressive defensive plays in left field in recent days, including a play last night where he left at the wall to rob a home run. And Wirth said after the game, he started to feel a lot more comfortable out there in left. He said left is so different than right because during games, both lefties and righties hit balls hard to right, or to left rather, whereas in right, balls will slice, they'll hang up a little bit more. So he said that means your reads need to be quicker in left field. He also said that during BP, you don't get many looks out there because the balls that are hit to left often end up in the seats. So he said you kind of need to just acclimate to it during games. But Jason said when he first broke into the big leagues, he played left. He said, I played it well then. I'm confident I can play it well now. Certainly looking like that. Thank you, Dan, with our Coons.com sideline report. Over 2 million vehicles sold and counting. Eduardo Escobar, the shortstop for the Twins, leads off. One for four last night. Roark with a lead. Two balls, one strike. Also on top of that, later in your career, it's not like you can run around like a chicken with your head cut off during batting practice and get the work in you used to when you were younger. So you have to work smarter for shorter bursts in left field. When Jason Wirth was 21, he could shag for all three groups in right or left field and not feel the effects of it during the baseball game. But as you progress in your career, you have to minimize the work and work smarter. Save your bullets, so to speak. Yeah, and plenty of ammo left. Right now, still cloudy overhead. Kind of a bright glare up there. And evidently Escobar didn't see that fastball real well. And right now it's interesting. Tanner Roark kind of living up in the zone with his heater. Three K's. Well, that's the front hipper. And when that's working, it's going to be a long day for left handers versus Tanner Roark. And he'll throw it back door to right. He's two. Here's our first look at Max Kepler. 23 year old outfielder born in Berlin Germany his parents professional dancers there he was an outstanding youth tennis player and he's made it to the big leagues signed with the twins at the age of 16 ball one <laughs> what kind of dancers <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. American Kathy, professional dancers That's over fantastic. there. Fantastic. Sorry. You just don't hear that every day. It's good stuff. That's a defensive swing and a 2 2 count. I got more. Bring it. Bring Max, Max Million Kepler Ripzicki. His actual, actual name, Max Kepler. Just dropping some serious knowledge here early. I love it. Two balls, two strikes with one out. And a ball driven the other way. Mets won their game at Atlanta tonight, so they're still three and a half back of the Nats. This 12 and 4 start, by the way, is historic. And there's Tanner's pitch count early. A lot of heaters feeling good with the fastball. That one is hammered. And Bryce Harper has to watch it one hop the wall. That thing really took off when it got out there. And the Minnesota Twins have their second base hit. Kepler on the season now, two for eight. Pretty good swing right here by Max Kepler. Look at him go down and get that. That's not a bad pitch from Tanner Roar. Kind of a sharp curveball right there. Just digs it out, hits it over Bryce Harper's head, and he can run. Easy double for the twin center fielder. And here's Maui's own Kurt Suzuki. Starting to swing the bat now. Five hits, last 11 at bats over three games. What Two here he, last night. What did his parents do? I don't know, but they send him to Cal State Fullerton <laughs> where they beat Texas in the College World Series. That was pretty good on their part. It was.
Good looking breaking ball from one side of the plate to the other. 21 pitches 12 strikes first inning. Couple hits off Geo last night on fastballs. So you see some off speed here early from Tanner. Ramos sets up in. That usually means heater and Tanner got that right in near his trademark. Tanner career 27 and 20. It's his 52nd career start. Got in low and away with the off speed. Good call, partner. Good execution by Tana Roark, who has struck out four. By the way, the Twins batting their pitcher ninth today after Gibson hit eighth last night. A change up away to Kurt Suzuki, and that's the pitch he had trouble seeing from Gio Gonzalez last night. So he made him aware of the fastball in. Suzuki pulls it foul, and then he goes to the other side with a slow pitch, and he's way out in front. Good yeah. sequence. A lot of tumble to that pitch. Phil Hughes, big league hitter, still looking for that first knock. First year with the Yankees, 07, with them through 13. Now his third year with Minnesota. Got himself a nice contract extension. Signed through the 2019 season after that great efficiency he featured last year. Strike two. Skies clearing gradually here. And a one two with two outs. Got him up in the zone. Who is the strikeout pitcher, Tanner Roark? And who's this guy playing like he's 22? Jason Worth about to lead off. There's a lot of reasons why we can't wait till Tuesday, April 26th, when the Nets take on the Phillies in game one of the three game set. Well, number one, it's Teddy Plush Window Cling Night. So, the first 20,000 fans in attendance, you get one of those. Visit nationals.com to purchase your tickets today. Numbers two, three, and four, we can't say on TV, but come get a free Teddy Plush Window Cling. Chow Chow, all right. Ready to rock uh -oh. it. Oh. Look out, look out. Sit. Sit. American Water Spaniel. Nice. I love those Water Spaniels. You can't keep that thing out of the water. 
Well, he must have enjoyed the walk around the warning track in the rain. Here's Worth, bottom of the second. Phil Hughes, 16 pitches, first inning. Worth on the attack early. We've seen Jason do more of that this week. Early in the count, he saw a lot of pitches first couple of weeks. Now starting to be more aggressive. Two runs on three hits for the Nats first inning. Four last night against the Twins. And the count one and two. So Worth gets his batting average out of that interstate area. Sitting at 200 right now. Career batting average 272. Had him reaching. To his left, the shortstop Escobar. Nice spin move before that throw. And a good play by Eduardo Escobar for the first out. And just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one, look forward to Miller time later in today's ball game. That's brought to you by Miller Light. Wilson Ramos was signed by the Twins at the age of 16. In 2004, six years in the minor leagues with them, where he hit 283, came to the Nats back at the trading deadline nearly six years ago now. And remember, the Nats traded their closer, Matt Caps, to Minnesota. There's triples, Lobatone. <laughs> The dugout reaction was priceless last night. He said when he got between second and third, he just really felt weird and just kept going. Didn't know where he was and ended up with a triple. The great slide into third base on top of the baseball and brightened all of our days with that one swing of the bat. He did. Good for him. Two hits, a walk, three RBIs last night. Matching his best evening ever as an ad driving in runs. 0 2 with one out. And Ramos takes one low. So Wilson, 13 ball games so far, 16 for 51 at 314. Couple of home runs. He's at 63 in his big league career. Good job by Hughes, had him reaching. And on the shift, that's the shortstop in the middle, Escobar again, two down. Why not have another look at this marathon run by our catcher? Well, he single the left his first time up, and this one you're thinking is going to get out of here. But just shorts off the right center field wall, and then he got around second base and kicked it into a new gear, late slide on top of the baseball, passed the bag, reaches back. And everybody going crazy. Max Scherzer. Daniel Murphy, Jason Worth, the whole dugout going nuts. Good stuff. Hey, it's a game you're supposed to be having fun right now. Right. A lot of it last night. Make baseball fun again. Danny Espinosa. Can't take him out of the lineup after two RBIs, two for three last night. He get Worth and Espinosa warmed up and then get Michael Taylor going and this offense will be unstoppable. See, it's a good idea by Danny. Usually the two out bunt, not a great play, but when you're hitting eighth and you're trying to turn over the lineup, it's definitely in play. And you know, last year at this time, he had a bunch of base hit bunts. I think it was five or six in the month of April. So feeling good at the plate swinging now and he's trying to get on via the bunt. I like the idea, especially with no strikes. Yeah, so no in the baseline. About 20 feet off the third base bag. And Espinosa takes a strike. But he's trying to bring it with him. He, you know, his bread and butter bun is to second base. Infielders can back up a little now on two strikes. Tanner Roark on deck, bottom of the second. Danny would like to turn that lineup over. This bouncer to the right side for Brian Dozier. Phil Hughes bounces back with a one two three on three ground balls. 
Tanner Roark's been good, and the Nats lead early, 2-0. The new guy, clean shaven Tanner Roark with some strikeouts early for you. A two seam fastball right there, little run back piece a couple of times. So that's the front hip sinker. When you're hitting left handed folks, that pitch looks like it's coming right at you. Your first reaction is get out of the way and then it comes back for a strike. So Tanner Roark with five of them early on. Time for Toyota Case for Kids, Washington area Toyota dealers. Want to help kids and their families by making a donation of 37 bucks to the children in at NIH. For every strikeout by Nats pitcher this season, 37 times five is 3,000. So that's good. Way to go, Tanner. Chi Ching. 2 3 0 Nats, 0 2 0 Twins. Brian Dozier popped up to short on the first pitch of the game. Offers to bunt on the first pitch of this at bat. Some good late bite on that slider, but he just missed. Good tempo going, too. Getting it and going. Liking that. Remember the third inning, his last start against the Marlins, is exactly what he did. He just picked up the pace. He's got swing and miss stuff here today. He does. Full count. Rosario and Maurer, the next two from Minnesota here in the top of the third. Swing and a miss. Brian Dozier strikes out for the 12th time this year. Mercedes Benz has Roark K-ing everybody. This is a cut fastball, so this goes the other way. You see how the late movement away from Dozier? We've been talking about how it's coming back. That one went the other way. So Tanner Roark, you see the, the grip, a little bit more pressure on the middle finger with the fastball grip, makes it move to the left late. Good pitch. Rendon even with the bag at third for Eddie Rosario. He was strikeout victim number one two innings ago. This is when it's fun to catch for Wilson Ramos. I mean, pick a pitch, any pitch. It doesn't matter. Put down a finger and it's good. No swing, says Chad Fairchild down at third.
in the year left center. Chris Heisey will make the call as the middle outfielder two outs. And this is the way you like to face Joe Maurer. Nobody on. Base hit. Beating the shift. A little flare over the left side of the infield first time up. And Joe Maurer now has 21 hits but on the air. So Tanner Roark's only had one double digit strikeout game. His whole career it was in 2014 against the Padres where he had 11. He's got six already. <laughs> Then he had Maurer reaching there. I mean, the off speed is moving late. It's down in the zone, whether it's the change up or the curve or the slider. And then the fastball's running back off the plate to a strike with the lefties like that. Upstairs, and that's it. So the twins are wondering who did this scouting report. We didn't know this guy was a fireballer. In D.C., Chris Heisey in the leadoff spot for the Nationals today, spot that's typically been occupied by Michael A. Taylor to begin the season. Dusty Baker was asked earlier today whether he'd give some thought to switching up the lineup a little bit atop the order with Taylor scuffling a bit. Dusty said that he'd be more willing to switch things up if the Nats weren't winning. He said continuity is very important, and he feels like the offense is coming together nicely. He said Michael's been working hard. His spring told us that he can perform in the leadoff spot. Tanner Roark hit that ball 395 feet, Dan, right back to you. As Heisey steps in, Bob, he, Dusty's saying that Michael A. Taylor has shown us that he can perform. We have the, the confidence in him that he can do it again. The main thing is he has to continue to work, remain confident, just try and relax up there. Dusty wants to keep that two through eight in his order kind of as is, and if Taylor can produce, it would allow him to do that. It's over two million vehicles sold and counting, Dan, with our Coons.com sideline report. The, the thing is, you feel like he's had such a great opportunity to take that center field and lead off for, and run with it right now. And it showed some signs. But w whenever somebody's hurt and you're going up against an injured player, that's your opportunity to, to, to snag it and run with it and say, yeah. hey, I'm the center fielder for however many years. And he still has an opportunity to do that. It just hasn't happened yet. Yeah, Michael A, 23 strikeouts and 62 at bats. And, and maybe that's why he's pressing, Carp, because he knows that this is a chance, a window. You know, Ben Revere started opening day in center field. He pulled the oblique, and now here's my chance to, to be the everyday guy for a long time. Yeah. And guys sometimes put pressure on themselves. 
Well, maybe he'll learn a thing or two from Max on how Max would pitch him. I know those conversations take place now and then. And Max probably told him, I mean, these guys are brutally honest, FP. He probably said, I wouldn't throw you a fastball right now. So that's caught by Joe Maurer and Heisey is 0 for 2. That'll bring in Anthony Rendon. It's just been very rough for Michael A. I mean, it's 15 games in a 162 yeah. game set. He's going to figure it out. Anthony Rendon rifled one up the middle first time. Harper followed with a double. Ryan Zimmerman drove both of them in with a base hit. So Anthony now three for six in this series. That's on the corner. And Bryce Harper next. Now two for four career against Phil Hughes. Jim Joyce took a long look at it, announced ball outside. Two and one. The old twin, Twins logo on the ball caps. They went back to that a few years ago. TC for Twin Cities. Had gone to kind of a script M on their ball caps in the 80s when they were so great with Herbeck, Kirby Puckett, Dan Gladden, who's in their radio booth, that whole bunch. Tom Kelly's teams were really good back in the 80s, mid 80s. 2 2. Rendon jammed and fouls it back. That's a good foul ball with two strikes. I mean, he didn't know if that ball was coming back for a strike or not. And at the last second, fights to foul it off and he's hoping to get something with more play now but boy the great hitters can do that that those borderline pitches swing at the last second foul it off and extend the AB 2 2 pitch did it again Nissan with the entire AB here. This is turning into a very good AB for Anthony, and it's 3 2. He's got pop. Twins play him deep. He's a gap shooter. And he got jammed on that one. Slow roller. Sano plays it perfectly in a. Another one, two, three. That's seven straight for Phil Hughes. We'll see Harper against him next inning.
Eagles ballpark. We pay our tribute to our troops. It's the DynCorp International Troop Recognition. Brought to you by DynCorp International, proudly serving our nation for 70 years. Stephen Drew agrees. Flags just moving a bit. Breeze kind of going from the left field foul pole over toward the other corner. Sun peeking through finally. Here we go, top four. Sano Arcia Escobar for Minnesota. Twins will be an interesting ball club to keep an eye on for the next couple of years with this very young outfield of Rosario Sano, who's playing third base today. Byron Buxton, they are so young and really getting their feet to the fire here under Paul Molitor. Second year. Last year, the Twins went 83 and 79. <laughs> Finished 12 games behind the Royals. And the big train, Tanner Roark, has now struck out eight Minnesota batters. I mean, everything that's coming out of his hand has tons of movement on it. And this fastball, I think, elevated on purpose. 93 miles an hour, he climbs the ladder. Maybe Sano thinking about the curveball. Gets the fastball, and everything he's thrown is a strike. He's got great tempo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight strikeouts for Tanner Roark. That's right there. Hmm. That would have been easier. Out of 13 outs. Oswaldo Arcia struck out swinging. First time up. That was ending the first inning when Tanner had given up a base hit to Maurer and walked Sano. Pardon me, I'm winning in one inning ahead. It's only 10 outs. Pop up in the first. Fly ball in the third. Everything else, strikeouts. Not enough swing back on that fastball. It stays inside. Second walk. With a 2016 flex plan, the choice is yours. Pick your four games at the ballpark here starting at just $80. Then we'll include a free Nationals grill item. Visit nationals.com slash flex to buy your flex plan today. Yeah, get some day games and then go grill at home. There's Escobar. He looked at strike three first time. You know, he'll be trying not to get to two strikes, so he's up there hacking. Really trying to get himself a place to dig in there in the back of the box. He's going all Denard span right now getting in the box. <laughs> Rearranging the batter's box. Hit the dogs barking. Yeah. I heard him on a close pitch two innings ago. I, I think that dog saying he wants a ground ball. Or maybe a tennis ball, I don't know. Well, may we all be the people that our dogs think we are. Dalmatian. There's a big boy there. That's a pocket beagle. I feel bad I left my dog at home today. I should have brought him up to the booth. He's sitting there by himself right now. Jumping at the sound of your voice. 
No, I left Animal. Or is he watching something else? No, I leave Animal Planet on. For him. <laughs> <laughs> one and two with one out. It's another one for Tanner Roa. I mean, he's got us losing our voices up here. It's so exciting. <laughs> he got Number ex nine. He got excited on that one. Why not? Yeah, why not? Absolutely. I mean, look at the break. Feeling it, man, in the zone. Tanner Roark early. The zone, no hit stuff, even though he's given up a few. Inside the numbers with Jeep. So an interleague play since 2013. Tanner Roark, one of those guys pitching at least 50 innings on that list. Max Kepler, the double, most impressive swing of the day for the Twins. He hit it hard over the head of Bryce Harper. There it is again. Right-handed pitchers. Trying to do something only one net pitcher has done this year, and that's 10 strikeouts. Steven Strasburg, Tuesday at Miami. For the 22nd time in his career. Yeah, he was dominant. 10 Ks, two walks, and eight innings. It's not easy to get through eight innings with 10 strikeouts and 104 pitches, but Steven did that. And then Roark pulls the string here on Max Kepler. This is where he's at his best because if you're a hitter now, you get in the guessing game with Tanner and you usually guess wrong. When he's got all four for strikes in any count, it's when anybody's at their best, but he always seems to outthink hitters. Got him! Steven Strasburg's 10th strikeout came in the eighth inning Tuesday. Tanner Roark's comes in the fourth inning here today. Unbelievable movement. The fourth inning of Nationals baseball is brought to you by the RAV4 Hybrid. All-wheel drive and unexpected performance. Visit buyatoyota.com today. Tanner Roark, strikeout dominance. We are all impressed with what he's showing us. And it'll be Harper, Zimmerman, Drew, bottom of the fourth, middle of the order. And Bryce a double right field way first time to set up that two run first inning. It was Bryce's first hit of the series 0 for 4 with a walk last night. Eighty nine cutting its way to the inside edge. Harper rips another one but right there is Brian Dozier. Eight straight for Hughes Geico president's race. Herbert Hoover. 
He's alone. But you know something's going to happen. We got a sword fight. Yeah, Game of Thrones, Thrones theme coming on the PA system, video on the board, and while the other five dueled it out, Herbert, who had feigned death at the beginning of that battle, went on to win the race. Let's hope there's a sequel. Ryan Zimmerman beat Phil Hughes at one of his best accomplishments this year. Hughes had been very, very good, almost untouched with runners in scoring position. Zimmerman knocked in two. The other thing Phil Hughes had done coming into this game today, he had not given up a hit all year long on an 0-2 count. And Ryan Zimmerman got Kurt Suzuki with that one. Old friends having a chat. Sorry about that, bro. Didn't mean to. And it, get him on the shoulder, winged him. Yep. Hmm. It hurts, but at least he wasn't in that sword fight. So three and one to Ryan. And he'll take the base on balls with one out here in the fourth. Sixth of the year for Ryan to go with his 12 hits. Inside some more numbers, we talked about Phil Hughes and how amazing he was last year. So the strikeout to walk ratio last year was well over 11 when he walked 16 batters all year. Walked two last start. And that's a lot for him. That's news. It is. It was five days ago against Milwaukee. Had a complete game six inning job. Rained out. High fly ball right field off the bat of Drew still going and right in front of the bullpen. Arcia makes the play. Drew making a bid for his second Nats home run. Maybe just a hair off the sweet spot is what kept that ball in the park. Did you see it on the end? I mean, he still hit it well. And that would have been good enough to get out of Yankee Stadium, but here, right to the wall, pretty good pass by Steven Drew, just missed it. Yeah, where he played last year. So here's Jason Worth. Hit the ball sharply up the middle first time. Escobar moved to his left, threw him out on a good play. So Hughes has retired nine of his last ten. Last base hit was Zimmerman's single first inning. Unbelievable ten strikeouts by Tanner Roark of the 12 outs he's registered. It's just like you don't think of triples when you think of Jose Lobatone. You don't think of strikeouts when you think of Tanner Roark. <laughs> like we said, 11 his only double digit strikeout game a couple of years ago against the Padres. He's yeah. got 10 already after four. I mean, who knows? This could be an historic day. Keeps this pace up, right? You know, and people who watch a lot of baseball tend to notice every little thing. Sometimes when you see things like that happening early in the season, you're thinking, hmm, maybe this is a different kind of year. Just one of those days. I mean, it, it locked in with whatever pitch. Good to see it because the toughest thing in baseball has to be a starter getting knocked around a little bit, and then he has to sit around and wait half a week for it to. Give him a chance to get out there again. Two hard line drives. Harper and Worth to Dozier. And we go to the fifth inning. Two nothing Washington.
Big hit by Ryan Zimmerman, the difference offensively in this game. Tanner Roark, a big difference himself. Came into this game with nine strikeouts total in 17 innings and eight walks. 10 Ks today, two walks, just two hits. Check out my Twitter between innings. Somebody said Tanner should have shaved two years ago. And you know who else is getting in a rhythm with Tanner is Jim Joyce. He's looking for strikes. He knows yeah. that th he's throwing them. He's working fast. The umpire getting into rhythm with the pitcher. So every borderline call you think is going to go his way from here on out. Because ask any umpire. They love a guy that works fast. They love a guy that throws strikes. That breaking ball <laughs> way up there and it still broke down into the zone. Watch this drop yeah, on the Mercedes Benz. Well, Kurt Suzuki track. gave up on it, but Jim Joyce didn't. And he got the call right. A lot of times an umpire will give up on a high curve ball because they're thinking there's no way that's going to come down, and it does. One and two. Number 11, he goes low and away again on Suzuki to strike him out. I'm trying to wrap my head around this thing right now. I mean, 20's the record. Clemens has done it twice. Kerry Wood most recently, I guess, in 1998. The franchise record is 17 with Max Scherzer. We saw it in his no hitter at the end of last season. And that's 11 in the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? And here comes the pitcher who struck out first time looking. You might want to text your friends that aren't watching. See, that's a perfect example I'm talking about. Yeah. The borderline pitch, he's in the zone. Jim Joyce is in the rhythm with him. So on the black away, Joyce is looking for strikes. He's hunting strikes because of what has been established for four and a third. Tanner last year, 70 strikeouts, 111 innings. What else? That's number 12. So this year, 21 strikeouts in just under 22 innings. It's career high. I mean, I was not thinking this driving to the ballpark today. And I don't know that anybody in that dugout was or anybody in this ballpark was, but that's 12 strikeouts in four and two thirds for Tanner Roark. Brian Dozier pop up to short and a strikeout. Jim Joyce is going to be hoarse for four days after this. Good call. Gloves optional today. Time given. Kind of swinging a foul tip. Ninety four with some late cut. And this is where the, the fans. Have to be loving what they're seeing. He's fan four in a row. Six of the last seven. Two, two, two outs, fifth inning. Maybe playable. Now the wind's going to push yeah. it out. Get in the stands. The. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're all about the team, aren't you? You know, the wind is coming down straight from the north right now. And uh, balls over on that side are going to be blown well out of play.
Time given late. Second time Dozier has been granted time by Jim Joyce. Trying to disrupt the tempo and the rhythm of Tanner Roark. Not a bad move, really. And he threw him a breaking ball on three and two that ended up way outside. Well, still a two nothing ball game. Roark third walk today. Eddie Rosario will be next. The Phillies are coming to D.C. Their first visit April 26th to the 28th. Pick up a Teddy plush window cling on the 26th and you can celebrate Military Appreciation Day presented by SAIC on the 27th. Visit nationals.com for your Nats Phillies tickets. The Phillies are playing good. They're one game under 500. One last night. Yeah, they're just a game behind the Mets. How to play. We get a text from my daughter now. Every time I say somebody's doing good and not well, she calls me on it. The oh. Phillies are playing well, Bob. Well, she was raised well. It doesn't. Baseball. Checking dad's grammar. Always. I texted you when you told that foul ball to get out of play. <laughs> <laughs> no balls, one strike. Trying to paint the outside edge and missing. Counts even 1-1. One, one. Tanner Roark, 52nd career start. 89th major league game overall. Twins seeing him for the first time. Work rate slowing down here a bit. Rosario has struck out swinging and hit a fly ball to center. A 1 1 pitch. Strike two again. 13 sounds so much better than 12, too, doesn't it? But, you know, you have to remind yourself, and maybe I'm reminding myself, too, by saying this it's just a 2 nothing game. Getting so caught up in the strikeouts with Tanner Roark. I think the main thing is get this inning over with and don't face Joe Maurer. However you can do it. Runner at first short lead. Ramos sets up inside. That is foul. See, but when you're throwing that front hip sinker, the one that starts right at lefties, that's pretty much the only thing you can do with it. What Eddie Rosario just did. If you force yourself to pull the trigger, meaning your natural reactions to take it because it's going to hit you. But if you do pull the trigger, the only thing you do is hit it foul. Yeah, high pitch count today, right from the get go with all the strikeouts. 21 pitches each of the first two innings. And a 1 2. Third inning, 14 pitches. 17 in the fourth. And now in the low 90s on the pitch count, fifth inning. Rosario getting a better lead. He's holding. And swinging a foul tip. Almost held on to it. Tough when it's up there, right? Your mask didn't really see it. See, I reached right over his mask at the end, lost sight of it for just that tick.
Target away side this time. Good pitch, good take. This one high in the air, short center. Shortstop Danny Espinosa ends up taking it. Ten a row are five outstanding innings due to bat third, high pitch count. We'll see how it plays out. Cox delivering life's most important connections. Two to nothing Nats as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Bryce Harper double his fifth score to run. And how about Ryan Zimmerman? Professional run driver inner guy. Right back up the middle. That would score Anthony Rendon and Bryce Harper who hustled into second with a double. And hustles home for the second run. High five from the skipper when you get back to the dugout. Some smiles all over and that's where we're at, two to nothing Nats. Yeah, looking to add on here in the fifth inning. Ramos, Espinosa, Roark, Field Hughes, 56 pitches, 37 strikes. Ramos solidly to left. So the Nats catchers, three hits and on base four times in this series with that base hit. Danny Espinosa next. I don't think you get caught up in the number with Tanner Roark. He's coming out. Because there hasn't been a, a high stress situation, has there? I mean, maybe the first inning with runner on first and second, but it's been pretty much cruise control for him. So, you know, what kind of 96 pitches has he thrown so far? They've, it's been an easy 96, and I think Dusty Baker and Mike Maddox taking that into account. It's not just the number. How did they get to that number? Yeah. He went 100 pitches, seven innings against the Braves here on April 13th, his win. He's on deck. His last start against the Marlins, that was a hard number, whatever it was. 88. 88. 96 here, a lot easier than the 88 he threw against the Marlins. So don't always get caught up in the number itself. Ooh, he's at 100. How did he get to those 100 pitches? And so far, it's been cruise control for Tanner Roark, and I like the move that Dusty Baker's keeping him in the ball game. Danny Espinosa, 0 for 4 career against Hughes with a ground ball today.
I like what Joe Madden said about Jake Arrieta the other night in his no-hitter as his pitch count was getting up there. And he said, hey, anytime my pitchers have a chance to do something special, we throw the pitch count out the window. Nasty pitch. Inside edge under the hand, strike two. Nissan will track it. I was talking to Mike Maddox about that very thing and he talks about throwing pitches out of the stretch versus the windup and how much more effort there is for a pitcher out of the stretch. So if you're throwing a high pitch count you always have a leadoff guy on that's going to make you more tired and stress the arm out of the stretch more than the windup. And he looks at that too when he looks at a pitch count. Tanner's only been off the stretch six times today. There you go. Two two Danny Espinosa. Pretty good at bat his first time up too. He scorched it. Three ninety five straight away center. The Nats off to a twelve and four start matching the two thousand twelve Nationals and the eighty one Expos. And in the district. Two senators teams in history did that. 1913, 1932. Espinoza hits one a mile way foul. And Phil Hughes slowing things down here a bit. Ramos at first, nobody out. Espinosa takes it outside, three and two. Danny has walked seven times this year. Strikeout to walk ratio as a hitter better than usual, 11 over 7. A lot of room in right center. 3 2 pitch, runner holding. Off to the left, the battle continues for the Nats' number 8 hitter. Phil Hughes facing Washington for the third time in his career, 1 0 with a 1 1 3 coming in. Took him 16 pitches to face five hitters in that two run first inning. The Ramos base hit was the first one since he had retired 10 of 11. Espinosa, what a good at bat. And now Tanner Roark could bunt a couple of guys to scoring position. Well, that's a great at bat. Hey, sometimes when you're hitting eighth, you just have to turn your brain off. Because the way you've thought your whole way as a hitter, when you're hitting second or leadoff, or maybe in the minor leagues for Danny, even third, they don't pitch you that way hitting eighth. So if you're thinking along the lines of how you've been pitched to you whole career is totally different with the pitcher on deck. You're going to get three two sliders and two oh curve balls and one oh change ups and fast all the fastball counts aren't necessarily fastball counts because they're they're trying to get you to fish for their pitch with the pitcher on deck. They're trying to pitch around you. So it's that fine line of do I expand my zone and try to get hits or do I just take my walks. So a lot of times if you could just flip that switch and turn your brain off you're actually a better hitter hitting eighth than if you're thinking. 
Well, Neil Allen, the Twins pitching coach, has visited the mound. Tanner Roark, 15 career sacrifices, one of them this year. And this is a pretty significant juncture of the ball game for him and the ball club. Trying to stretch out that lead in a quest to win a series today with another one tomorrow. He's going to swing away. Slow roller. It's going to have the same result as a good bunt. <laughs> it is the same as a button. You saw the dugout. He got a standing ovation right there. <laughs> and well, hey, move him ahead with a butcher hey, boy. It's That's a productive fine. out. Everything's working. Smiles in the dugout. The Tanner Roark pulls it back and then basically bunts it to second base. Yeah. Everybody laughing in the dugout. I'm glad he got jammed and he hit it harder. It might have been a double play. Yeah, it's good. So here's Chris Heisey in a big spot. Twins infield in. Outfield has to respect Heisey's power. And he takes it inside. Chris tried to bunt his way aboard first inning. And then a pop up over to Joe Maurer in the third. Three for 15 as a net with a solo home run. That was as a pinch hitter. Guy who doesn't walk a lot, he's up there to hack. Borderline call for Phil Hughes, 1 1. Bob Henley, all, sunblock, all, 50 plus. All the sunblock. Zombie third base coach. Heisey in the air to right. This is Arcia. It's not that deep. Ramos will come back. And then better get back Danny Espinosa. Throw was airmailed a bit, but not deep enough to send Wilson Ramos. Two outs. It'll be up to Rendon. And don't forget, you got Kurt Suzuki back there, who's one of the more athletic catchers we've seen him on tag plays field short hops dive into runners you see him jumping right there to save an overthrow Phil Hughes in the right spot backing up a little thing that's a big thing that you don't always see at the major league level first base open but nobody in Minnesota wants to see the next guy bat in this inning. Anthony with the base hit up the middle, a bouncing ball to third. He's driven in one run this season. But that's a good hold by Bob Henley on that because he knows that two, three, and four are coming up. When you're up by two runs, you take a chance on a sack fly, a short sack fly, even with Wilson Ramos, if you have six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine coming up. But when you have the heart of your order and you have two RBIs possibly out there, there's no need to push it right there, even with a two run lead. But I guarantee you, if that was getting toward the bottom of the order right there, even on that short fly ball, he sends Ramos. Rendon out of play right side. Now the 0-2. Rendon had jammed on that one. Right center and coming in to grab it as it tails to Gar Arcia. And the Nats are done. They leave two. They've only stranded three all day.
Let's all count to 12, kids. You can count along with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's 10, 11, and 12 strikeouts for Tanner Roark. 12 is the magic number. Good job, kids. And better job, Tanner Roark. Who faces Joe Maurer here, top of the sixth. Shift is on. Danny Espinosa up the middle, slightly to the left of the second base bag. Drew on the grass, short right field. Tanner drops in the breaking ball. Ball scorched to the right side. Ryan Zimmerman is playing first base like he's been there his whole career. You know, that's a great call. I mean, he's so much more comfortable over there this year than he was last year, and he looked comfortable last year. The pick he made on Danny Espinosa last night on the short hop sinker, that play right there, making it look easy, real smooth. Miguel Sano is next. So the first ground ball out is a scorching liner that takes one hop into Ryan Zimmerman's mitt. So the Twins, Joe Maurer, base hit two outs first inning. Kepler, double, two outs second inning. And nothing but a couple of walks since then. Every hitter has a strikeout. Look at that. <laughs> High in the air to right, and that ball will tail out of play. There have been five other strikeout games this year of 12 or more. Bryce tripped going for that ball. Did you see that at the end? Yeah, it comes up flexing and walking slowly, and Chris Isey runs over to check with him. It, it's right where the grass hits the track, and he tried to pull up, and I think he might have... Well, I couldn't see the lower half, so I'm not going to guess. But it was obviously the left ankle, lower leg. Oh, and two to Miguel Sano. He's walked and struck out. And he has struck out again. Number 13 for Tanner Roark. So now he's an elite company. Only four pitchers have 13 strikeout games this year. I mean, he needs four more to tie the franchise record set by Max Scherzer. And if they're playing any sort of game at the corner tap in Wilmington, Illinois, <laughs> celebrating these strikeouts, <laughs> nobody's seeing them anymore because they're all passed out. They're going to need a designated truck driver. <laughs> Vince Velasquez of the Phillies, 16. Jose Fernandez of the Marlins. Jaime Garcia of the Cardinals. Chris Archer of the Rays. 13 strikeout games this year. Now, in fact, Archer just 12, so Roark's passed him. So... Among the strikeout guys in the big league so far this year, Oswaldo Arcia with two outs, and that's a strike, one and two. Did you see how he got out of the way of that, though? That tells you the late movement. He backed away from a strike right there. That pitch is coming right at him, and that was self-preservation all until the last second where it came back for a strike. Throw it again. But when you see hitters getting out of the way of strikes, that tells you how much the balls move. I don't even think the center field camera is doing it justice today. Oh. 
John Patterson, Max Scherzer, Steven Strasburg. Now Tanner Roark joins them as the only Nats pitcher ever with 13 or more. Two balls, two strikes. Strasburg, of course, that was his major league debut. And Tanner Roark has struck out 14, handcuffing Arcia. 18 outs in the game, 14 with no contact. In a 2-0 game with Harper, Zimmerman, and Drew coming up. Okay. He'll lead off bottom of the sixth inning against Phil Hughes in a two nothing game. He's hit the ball extremely hard twice. In fact, his out was probably a harder hit line drive. Then the double almost took Brian Dozier into right field with it. So Bryce has 13 extra base hits. Ties him with Trevor Story of Colorado National League lead. And Manny Machado of Baltimore, the same number. Nets box score. Most of it in the first inning. One out single Rendon. Harper a double. Zimmerman drove them both home. The only other base hit. Wilson Ramos lead off line drive to left last inning. Harper the other way out of play. Counts even 2-2. Two, two. So it looked like he did something to his left leg on that foul ball, and I'm watching the balance throughout the at bat and, and how he's staying on his backside. It seems like it's okay. Might have a scheduled off day tomorrow. We'll see. Harper hacks one, and that's unreachable for Joe Maurer. Let's see how he runs. He looks full speed into second base with another double. So he's the major league leader in extra base hits now with 14. 
You see him staying on that backside, really riding the legs, and that ball's inside. Watch him pull his hands in and stay above the baseball. You just don't see that swing with lefties too often, being able to hit that high inside fastball. But look at him get on top of it. And if there's any questions about the lower half, he is flying around first base, pulls up easily with another double. So three ringing bullets off the bat of Bryce Harper today, two hits. Ryan Zimmerman's had a perfect day with a base hit, two RBIs and a walk. By the way, Harper now, three for six career against Phil Hughes. Huge run out there at second base to lead off the sixth there. Hughes due to bat fourth in the seventh inning. If it was an American League game with this pitch count, it wouldn't matter, but different game over here. Zimmerman to right. That'll be a productive out. Garcia gets behind it. And Bryce Harper stand up to third with one out. Great at bat by Ryan Zimmerman to set it up for Stephen Drew. And she'll get some high fives going back to the dugout, moving Bryce Harper along to third base with one out. Nice at bat. May 28th, celebrate DC's. International community with Taste of the World. With a special ticket, you enjoy a pregame culinary experience and take home a set of Nationals salt and pepper shakers. Visit nationals.com slash special ticket events to buy today. Steven Drew hit one last time that would certainly score a run here. He sent Arcia on to the right field track with a long fly ball. Phil Hughes wants him to not elevate it. And that is on the infield. Joe Maurer for the second out. It'll take a two out Jason Worth RBI to make it three nothing. When you have insight you know how to handle your finances with confidence brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. So Lucas Giolito what's he doing at double A Harrisburg the ERA good solid. Last night a no decision. Kind of rainy weather I was told. Five hits couple of runs in four innings. Walk four struck out a couple. I can't even say he's ready to call him up because the guy on the mound's got 14 strikeouts today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah when's he going to pitch. Worth a swing and a misses. He goes first pitch hunting for the second time today. And by the way, there's no one throwing in the Nats bullpen. He's three strikeouts away from the franchise record. Only through 12 pitches to get a one, two, three, sixth inning. A tribute to his efficiency. So let's go inside the numbers now with PNC. Only Ryan Howard, we mentioned this last night, more interleague homers by National League hitters than Jason Worth. That's playing the AL Central this year. Swing and a miss up and in. Phil Hughes. That's only his second strikeout all day. Quite a ball game. Roark center stage, 2 0 after six.
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Quite a day at the ballpark. Ten O'Rourke, six innings, two hits, 14 Ks. He has Fandescabar twice the leadoff man here. Check this out. Yeah, Strasburg most recently, middle of September last year. <laughs> Max, the no hitter, October 3rd. And, and Stevens' debut on. June 8th was 14. You, you remember all the fanfare with that? Tanner Roark out of nowhere with 14 today. Oh, you never know what you're going to see every day. That's what makes this game so amazing. 2 1 pitch. Bouncing ball, Ryan Zimmerman. Unassisted. Another ground ball out, only the second of the day. And Max Kepler, the center fielder, will be next. So the Nats get the bullpen busy with Oliver Perez and Sean Kelly. Minnesota bullpen. Some guys playing short toss right now before they get up on the mound as mentioned. If anybody gets on base here in the seventh Phil Hughes due to bat fourth. Kepler a double and a called third strike. He was strikeout victim number 10 back in the fourth. in there to even it up 2 2 pitch has been there all day and it's been nasty. Got him on the inside corner with that swing back fastball number 15. I mean there's nothing you can do with this pitch as a hitter it, it, and if you do fire off a swing you're either breaking your bat or hitting it foul but look at the move that's right at Kepler and then it comes back good frame by Wilson Ramos catching that front corner really the only time it was a strike is when it hit Wilson Ramos's glove 15 strikeouts for Tanner Roark my yeah. goodness and now it's only him and Max Scherzer atop the career strikeout list for the Nats Kurt Suzuki out swinging twice on Breaking balls low and away, so even though that fastball was upstairs, he was hacking. I mean, I hope if he gets this out, there's some sort of standing ovation here at Nats Park because this has been spectacular. I feel lucky to have watched it. So at Nationals Park, this is a record because Scherzer's were on the road at Milwaukee and at New York. Crowd's getting into it on an 0-2 pitch. Suzuki to short. Seven shutout innings by Tanner Roark with 15 strikeouts. He's due to bat third in the bottom of the seventh. The Nationals two, the Twins nothing.
performance by Tanner Roark today. Third most K's by a national ever. The most in this ballpark ever. 15 strikeouts in seven innings. And just as importantly, or more so, it's a two hitter with no runs. So there it is. Passing Strasburg's 14. Yeah, I think he's done for the day. And a hug from the skipper again. This one not so awkward. Strasburg right there to congratulate. Tanner Roar getting used to hugs from his skipper. And what an amazing performance. I mean, you knew it early, right? You, you just don't think of him in the strikeout. But after two innings, he had five. After three innings, he had seven. And you're like, wait, what? This could be one of those days. First pitch swinging. Wilson Ramos, a high fly ball to right center. And the right fielder, Arcia, takes control. One out. Danny Espinosa next. Into the 3 o'clock hour here at Nationals Park. BCFP, DK, watching some Nets history here with Tanner Roark. Did not see this coming, and we love it. We'll see who comes out to pinch hit in a moment. We we'll see Matt Dendecker doing some stretching. So he'll bat for Roark here. Espinosa, chopper right side, race to the bag is on. Mauer to Hughes, and they beat Danny Espinosa. Two outs. Check out the Potomac Nationals, our stars of tomorrow, just south of here, down on Woodbridge. Back in town Tuesday through May 1st, 703-590-2311. For all your ticket information, you can log on PotomacNationals.com. Blake Trinan for the eighth. Matt Dendecker as a pinch hitter, one for six, two RBIs, one for 14 overall. Former Nat, Fernando Abad, right hander Casey Fien. Dendecker checks in with another pinch hit. So on the attack early, he's aboard with two outs for Chris Heisey. Nats have single hits each of the last three innings. Last night a walk for Dendecker, today a base hit, two good at bats in a row, nicely done. Washington D.C. Lexus Steelers are donating 250 bucks to the Children's National. They had a good day today, for every home run a Nats player hits this season. So keep them coming is for a wonderful cause. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. I thought that was the strikeout one for a second, obviously. They'd be broke. Yeah. I get it mixed up sometimes. Den Decker, big secondary lead. Ball one outside to Heisey. Matt's the kind of guy who could score with two outs on an extra base hit. Phil Hughes at the end of his afternoon, scheduled to lead off the eighth. Some days you're good and the other guy's better. This will draw a step off.
Hey, I'm just looking at my scorecard, Carp, and the only hard hit ball today was the double by Kepler. You remember Joe Maurer kind of inside out jam shot with the shift for the base hit in the first inning. But maybe Joe Maurer's ground ball to Ryan Zimmerman in the sixth that he picked the other hard hit ball. So yeah. really two hard hit balls all day for the Twins. Not a lot of contact. Just a dominant performance all the way around. 1-1 one, one pitch. Maybe allow dogs in the park every Tanner Roark start. K-9s and Ks. It's a Doberman pincher right there. One and two to Heisey. Trucks are the, the trucks telling me there's a K and K nine, and that's why it happened. I like it. Wow! Thought that was a strike through the cutter on the inner <laughs> half. Tried to run it back. That was a little bit outside the bumper of that Mercedes Benz. 2-2 two, two with two outs. Trying to keep the inning alive. Heisey is for Rendon. He'll get jammed. Maurer, a diving stop. And close at first. And the Nets might want to take a look. Toby Besner calling Heisey out. And we'll see how quickly the Twins leave the field. They're not really enthusiastic about leaving, are they? They're usually, not hustling off the field. Yeah, no. I mean, usually, let's see right here. This is a great shot. This should show us. What do you got? Did the hand beat the foot? Wow. Ooh, he could be safe. Okay. That's a great angle. Is that definitive enough to overturn it? They're going to challenge. See. Well, this is big. That's when I like the head first slide into first base when the pitcher's covering because you feel like your body length can get there. But even though he's hitting the dirt and slowing him down just a little bit, great hustle by Chris Heisey. You love the effort. We got a bunch of good looks with the X mode, don't we? So New York is not going to get cheated. Oh. Help me out, Carp. What do you got? I had him f safe on the first one, so I'll stick with it. But. Man, there is no tie goes to the runner. That's a myth. You either beat it or you don't beat it. So it's impossible for two guys to touch at the same time? For seven years, yeah. Okay. Supposedly it is, but that's a good question. It, you know, the, the umps will tell you there's no such thing as a tie. They're taught that at a... Now the crowd likes what yeah. they're seeing. I mean, this is a tough one. I, I don't know. This is one of the hardest ones I've seen in a long time. I'm not going to lie about it. Chris Isaac wants a base hit, obviously. The Nats want to extend the ending to Anthony Rendon and hoping Bryce Harper gets up. But this is a tough one, and this might take a minute. And I think you have to be okay with whatever this comes out as, right? Yeah. I'm just trying to see where... Hughes's foot hits. That's the hard part, right? Because there's Heisey's hand on it, and, and it looks like it gets there. You guys slow that down nice. A tick before his foot. It really does. This one's hard to tell when Chris's hand hits the bag. Wow, I mean, is there such a thing as a tie? That first angle slowed down to me is going to be the definitive shot. The very first Exmo, mm -hmm. as slow as they can look at it in New York, should tell the story. Because yeah. you can see the bag move with the foot of Phil Hughes. Yeah, this one. Slow that down as slow as you can. So the base will move when Phil Hughes's foot hits it, and then Chris Heisey's hand. So... Keep going. One more. One more. Hand on the bag. And there's the foot. Wow. 
Headsets are coming off. What do we got? Jim Joyce will let us know. Wait, what? Now they one on. umpire just put them back on. Hold on. He's out. I tell you, the Nats cannot win a challenge. 3-1 it goes. Mauer to the pitcher. Evidently not, as they say, definitive. today not all that interested in what's going on Nats lead two nothing a challenge lost brilliant day for Roark now it's up to Trinan and Pepelbon career day for Tanner Roark you, you don't know that he'll have a better day in his big league career yeah. I mean 15 strikeouts every pitch jumping out of his hand the fastball inside the lefties that was running back the curveball slider the change up looking just like his fastball pounding the strike zone good tempo going a team that strikes out a lot he took advantage of it so yeah the, the line moves to Blake Trinan right now, but what we saw here today was darn near historic. So Ryan Zimmerman, for the moment, his first inning hit, still standing up. Blake Trinan gets the call here in the top of the eighth inning for the Minnesota Twins. Matt Dendecker in center field on a double switch. And you see Blake Trinan, the, the arsenal fastball slider. And usually the fastball moves much better when he pitches back to back days. So we'll keep an eye on that seven games. Nice record, nice ERA, nice opponent's average. And it feels like it's more than two to nothing because of the dominance of Tanner Roark, but we got ourselves a ball game. Absolutely. Jorge Polanco bats in the number nine spot. Just called up when Trevor Plouffe went on the DL. Polanco pinch hit and walked in the ninth inning last night. One ball, one strike to the Minnesota number nine hitter, eighth inning. And that misses up and away just a bit. Phil Hughes didn't have a bad day. 94 pitches 66 strikes he gives up two runs in seven innings on six hits. Don't want to walk the leadoff guy in a situation like this top of the order due up. And trying and misses badly. Follow the Nats live with the MLB.com at bat app. Stay up to the moment at any moment. Game day, live game video highlights, stat cast. Download it, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet, MLB.com at bat.
Top of the order, Brian Dozier. Blake Trinan pitched the ninth inning last night. He got Dozier on a liner to left to end the game. I mean, right now the Twins have to make Blake Trinan and throw strikes. So I don't know that Brian Dozier, even though he's got some pop, is going to be swinging here early in the count. He might be taking a strike all the way. Let's see. There he was. Mid 90s, low in the zone. Brian Dozier, 0 for 2 with the walk. One, actually uh, 0 for 7 now in the series, aboard via an error last night. And Blake Trinan still working from behind. But that's the sign of a guy that's struggling. You know, you get ahead in the count and, and you tell yourself as a hitter, you know, get a good pitch, but you're really swinging with the count when you struggle. And what does that mean? You get ahead and you're betting on a strike and you see Dozier right there in between. That would have been ball three. He started his swing, couldn't hold up. Two two pitch looking for the ground ball time given. And uh, Jim Joyce was pointing at Wilson Ramos. Ball gets away. Wilson keeps it close. Three and two. Dozier has struck out 12 times this year in 66 at bats. Well, big pitch coming. Yeah, he's got a fast runner at first. Got him on the inside edge. Big strikeout. On a big call for Blake Trinan, one down. Well, a big call by Wilson Ramos. He, he knows he's struggling with fastball command, so what does he do? He calls a 3-2 slider, and Blake Trinan executes it perfectly. It's the last pitch in the world that Brian Dozier thought he was going to see, and he gets strike three. Nicely done. Well, Kelly's been warming up. Perez has been warming up. And this call to the bullpen brought to you by the UPS store. Together, there's nothing we can't solve. Visit the UPS store.com for locations. Here comes Oliver Perez.
Nationals baseball on Masson brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Visit DCKiaDealers.com to learn more. And by T-Mobile. Get major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE in the last year. Mm -mm -mm. Some barbecue chicken on the grill on a Saturday afternoon in April. Lefty lefty matchup Eddie Rosario now against Oliver Perez. And a ball hit out to left center for Matt Dendecker who just came in after hitting to stay on the double switch quick out and now it's Perez and Joe Maurer. Joe Maurer is two for five career against Perez who makes his seventh Nationals appearance. Maurer today one for three. Oliver with a good breaking ball at the knees. Yeah, as a hitter, you're looking into a window of where the pitcher's release point is, and I would have no idea where to look with Oliver Perez. One time he's three quarters, one time he's sidearm. So that gives him extra velocity, even though the gun's not saying it, because you're picking him up late. Where do I look? Mauer started. Chad Fairchild says he went 0 and 2. Check it out from the side. It's pretty far. Pretty far. I think it was indisputable. I don't even know what that word means anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was baiting you there. Yeah, I know. Oh, two. Did he go again? Yes, he did. Oliver Perez solid situational appearances for the Nets. So four pitches four strikes bottom of the eighth coming up. Nets have a chance to go for the sweep behind Steven Strasburg tomorrow if things work out here. He has been amazing. 3 0, 1 2 5 ERA. He's kept the ball in the ballpark. The league's hitting 183 against him. 21 strikeouts in 22 innings. Nets extra, 1 o'clock. First pitch, 135. And the Twins scratched Irvin Santana for that start. And they'll go with second year man, 25 year old Tyler Duffy. Bottom of the eighth coming up. It's a good Honda do up for you. Two, three, four. And what Anthony, Bryce, and Ryan have done at home this year brought to you by Honda. Minnesota pitcher Casey Fien, 32 years of age. Big league time with the Tigers in 09 and 10, and since 12 with Minnesota. 
Yeah, fastball slider. He'll cut the fastball. Slap to the left side, Rendon. And that's well played by Miguel Sano. Anthony Rendon, one for four today. A good idea by Anthony Rendon trying to get on for Bryce Harper as you see the season numbers for the Twins right hander. Bryce Harper faces him for the first time and he's two for three with a pair of doubles against Phil Hughes today. Hughes went seven innings, two runs, six hits. Couple of walks, couple of strikeouts, 94 pitches, 66 strikes. Pitching well enough to win a ball game, but Tanner Roark totally shutting down his teammates today. Bryce barreled up everything he's seen today. A couple of doubles and a line out to second. Oh. So Bryce on top of baseball with 14 extra base hits. On base, 16 of 17 games. 1 1. That was 94 on the board here. And the count's one ball, two strikes. A couple of hits under his belt. He's letting the throttle out here. Goes the other way, hits it out of play. Follow at Masson Nationals on Twitter and look for our latest retweet contest. You can win an exclusive Nats prize pack. Again, that's at Masson Nationals on Twitter to enter. Brought to you by Cox, delivering life's most important connections. One and two to Bryce. Getting his money's worth in this at bat so far. Nats bullpen. Closer working. Two nothing ball game. Bottom of the eighth. Jonathan Papelbon one save this week against Miami. Staying away. Fiend gonna have a talk with Kirk Suzuki on what they want to throw here in a one-two count. <laughs> Pitches seen today. No fewer than three any time up. Bryce has hit the ball on the button three times. The only out, the line drive at Dozier leading off the fourth. Pitch away. He went. In fact, Jim Joyce is saying it was a foul tip. Bryce seems befuddled and walks away. Two outs. I will say this. I think it, I did hear two sounds. And maybe on his check swing. Let's take a listen. It nicked his bat. What do you got here? Oh, he's so hard to tell. It's tough to tell. Two outs. Ryan Zimmerman, one for four career against Fien. Once again, I'm not sure. <laughs> I said maybe, and that's final. <laughs> what's that in dis What's that word you always say? Indisputable. Indisputable. No Our idea. Souls. No idea what that means. Two six oh Nats, O two O twins. 
Minnesota stranded six runners today Nationals five. And Zimmerman looks at a good fastball outer half 0 2. You can kind of look at the outfield and see how they're going to keep the ball away from Ryan. Huge gap left center. Trying to get on for the third time today. In the ninth, Minnesota will have four, five, six. The good news is Joe Maurer made the last out eighth inning. And the 0-2, Ryan takes it away. Nats are trying to win their seventh straight at home. Some healthy rips. Yeah, Bryce got a bunch. And he hits this one extremely hard out to center. Ryan Zimmerman, a two for three day with a walk. And the Nats have a base runner with two outs for Stephen Drew. Well, the first hit's been the difference in the game. The RBI single in the first inning scored Anthony Rendon, Bryce Harper, and a walk, a fly out to right. Now bookends with a single to left center. Nice day for Ryan Zimmerman. Plus a nifty play at first, too. Absolutely. Drew 0 for 3. He's two for three career with a home run against Casey Fien. Low and inside and Kurt Suzuki had to scramble a bit. Two and oh. If Tanner Roark, who's not known for the strikeout, struck out 15 today, what is in store for Steven Strasburg tomorrow, you wonder? I'm predicting 15 ground ball outs. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's smart because <laughs> the way it's gone, yeah. Pitch to contact, get a bunch of ground balls, Why strike not? out two. Who knows? It's going to be fun to watch him pitch tomorrow, though, I'll tell you that. And Drew hacking on a 2-0. Tyler Duffy called up from Minnesota. He was pretty good last year. Five and one with a 310 ERA in 10 starts. Jason, by the way, protecting the camera bay and our reporter with a redirect on that foul ball. He said, oh, I'm here to protect you guys. I'm here for you. You could hear him on the mics. Yeah. Protecting Mass and Dan down there. His little bearded brother <laughs> <laughs> three and one shift on three guys right side drew takes a strike. And that's not the worst thing in the world. It'll get Ryan Zimmerman on the move here with a full count. Minnesota dugout just moved Escobar a little bit over to the right side. And Drew swinging a foul tip and he stays alive.
Two nothing ball game. Bottom of the eighth. Big crowd kind of quiet waiting to see if the Nats can add on here. Center fielder deep runner moving Drew stays alive again. Nats with a win could go up four on the Mets who played later again at Atlanta. They won last night. Phillies hanging in there. Twins and the Braves are the two teams that started 0 and 9. They won their first games on the same day. And Drew fouls another one. Come back, Ryan Zimmerman. A couple more, and Ryan's going to have tomorrow off. <laughs> Getting his work in down there at first. Pits track all over the place. Drew swinging a miss. We're going to the ninth. So the Nats, two runs on seven hits. They've stranded six runners today. Jonathan Papelbon will be looking for number seven shortly. And just like we promised you earlier in the game, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Show you the last couple of outs of the amazing or amazing day by Tanner Roark. That was his 15th strikeout. The little line out to Danny Espinosa, some dugout love. Dusty Baker with a that away homie or that away dude. Not sure which one. It's one of the two. I'll guarantee it. And then some high fives for Max Scherzer and the rest of his teammates. We've seen. A bunch in that first base dugout just having fun playing baseball all year long. 35 year old Jonathan Papelbon for the top of the ninth against Miguel Sano, Oswaldo Garcia, Eduardo Escobar. Yeah, fastball upper 80s, low 90s. Slider and a split to go with it. Opponents hitting 321 off Jonathan. Sano sees him for the first time. Bright, bright sunshine here, top of the ninth inning. Strike one. Sano 0 for 2 with a non contact day, a walk and two strikeouts. Espinosa really playing him to pull it short. And Papelbon ahead 0 2. Side of the plate to the other. One out, ninth inning. 
And that's the new Nats record for strikeouts in a nine inning game with 18. The slider from Jonathan Papelbon. Fastball away, fastball in, slider away. 18 strikeouts today. Wow. Next up, Oswaldo Arcia. Johnny and Ray here at the ballpark, and when this one's over, a little bit of timely hitting and a lot of pitching for Johnny and Ray to talk about. W.B. Mason presents Nats Extra Post Game. Garcia, two strikeouts and a walk. Shift is on to the other side of the field now. Nothing but strikes so far. It's Get her of, unhappy about that one. I mean, it's kind of been the theme of the day, right? Tanner Roark started this party by throwing strikes. Jim Joyce has been looking for him all day. Yeah, Garcia has a beat there according to the box, but umpire's been seeing strikes all day. 0 2 with one out. Did he go? No. Busted bat right side. Steven Judas Zimmerman two down. Jonathan Papelbon against Eduardo Escobar. Rendon on the grass at third. Bunch of twins today are 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Pitch outside, 2 and 0. Got a quick 3 and 0 count here. Tie your shoe, regroup, get back in that strike zone in a hurry. There you go. Probably taken right here too, right? Trying to get the tie and run the plate. You think? Yeah. That would be the smart play right here. I'm gonna get the same pitch. Three two anyways. To left. Jason Worth. Yeah, he's got another one. And so do the Nets. Seven in a row at home. Off to a historic start now at 12 and four. Pardon me, 13 and 4 now. And the Nats, just enough hitting and all the pitching you could hope for to win a series and be in a position for a sweep tomorrow. A two hitter. Every night, the story is a little bit different with this ball club, but every day and night, it's another curly W.